everyone, it's Dawn here. Um, thank you for joining me. Today I want to talk about the 16 hour uh, challenge. This was a competition made by um, eWheels and yay eWheels. And uh, it is to see how many miles one can do in a 16 hour time frame. This competition was open worldwide and um, I believe, oh my gosh, I don't have anything ready. I believe there were 10 of us that did it, um, maybe more. Oh God, I didn't, I didn't look at the most recent things, but um, I believe it was around 10 people. Uh, the, it finished and the winners were, oh, should I talk about that? Should I, I'm like jumping right into it. I'm trying to make this video quick because I have a lot to talk about and I don't want to take up too much time, but okay, let's back up a little bit. Before we do all that, <clears throat> I do want to talk about memberships. So, um, <clears throat> I have turned on memberships for my YouTube channel and that is where you can support me by uh, joining and becoming a member. There should be a join button on my channel and I will have the link in the description to join and stuff like that if you so wish. And if you do, I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, I do have a list of my current members and big thanks to all of my members. And um, okay, so we got Duff. Duff actually um, convinced me to do this and turn it on and, you know, and it's just like every little bit helps sort of thing. And I am in a situation. So, um, Duff and Ditto Head. Ditto Head is Alan, otherwise known as the person that fell into the canal. He is a real life friend of mine as well. Um, okay. Let's see. Shaxologist. Uh, Blue Collar Jose, What Could Go Wrong, Bob Muniz, uh, Michael Parker. All right, let's see who else we got. How do I do this? Uh, da, 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 da. Um, uh, Scampster. Oh, my goodness. On Air Promo, that's Larry. Um, Uncle, Ho Uncle Joe's Fun Zone, Mark McFarland, Anonymous Stingrider, so, uh, nine, 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 el oh God, nine electromatic, E Simon and A Viking. Um, those are my members. Thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate it. And actually that's way more than I thought I'd get so far. We haven't beat Duff yet. So a little, a little a ways more to go, but, um, all right. So the 16 hour challenge ended and, uh, the top three were Roger first, me second, and then Cher. Um, and let's see, Roger got 363.75 miles. My official tally, my official miles was 361 uh, miles. Um, and God, see, I am so unprepared. Um, I believe Cher got 320 some miles. Um, so tonight, to today. What is today? Today is June 5th, uh, Wednesday, and tonight at 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, Roger is doing a live stream. So join us there tonight. And um, he's doing a live stream. Uh, and he I don't I don't even know who's on it. I I believe I'm supposed to be on it. I think um, Cher was invited to be on it. Is it even called? Uh, is your name Cher? I don't know. Sure, Cher. It's spelled Cher um, and um, maybe someone from eWheels. So, oh my goodness. And anyways, uh, we'll be talking about um, the 16 hour challenge then. So this is a new dress. What do you guys think? It's all flowy. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm so squirrel. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll wear a different dress tonight so that I, I don't, I don't look all the same all the time, but, um, okay. What do I need to talk about? What prompted me to do the 16 hour challenge? Well, it was a mix of a lot of things. Um, I, at first I didn't want to do it. I mean, I don't have the wheel for it. My biggest wheel is an EX 30. Um, and you know, everyone it's known you got to have a master pro 
uh, or a modified Master Pro, something with lots of batteries, be able to charge really fast and to even, you know, really compete in this. Next time it might be nice if there was a section for, you know, categories like for modified wheels versus non-modified wheels or wheels with, or maybe battery capacities. Not just say modified, you know, but just say like battery capacity sizes, like, you know, whatever you can do, 9,600 watt hours, 7,200 watt hours, uh, 4,400 watt hours, um, or, you know, a range or something like that. And then like my EX30 is, what is my EX30? 36, oh God. I have this thing in my brain. When I start spouting out numbers, they all start getting jumbled up in my head. What's my, what is my EX30? 3,600 watt hours? Um, anyway, so, you know, maybe uh, separated into categories like that so that the people with the smaller wheels can also participate and have a valid, you know, um, uh, have valid runs. So that might be an idea. Um, other things were that, you know, since it is worldwide, but in different parts of the world, it's different seasons. Um, you know, other places are in rains right now and snow or whatever. So they need it at different times. And I don't know, there's a lot to think about. It's hard to cover something worldwide and have it work for everybody, right? But anyways, this was, from my understanding, from all that I know, e Wills's first time. And so kudos to them for throwing out such an amazing idea, you know, for a challenge. And um, at least when we, now that we've done it once, now we know more of what to expect and maybe we can accommodate others. And look at me, I'm saying we, <laughs> right? But um, anyway, so. Um, what prompted me to do it was that I was just, um, there's a lot of negative in my life right now. Um, my divorce is not going well and, um, I lost my house and my daughter and, um, without going into too much details, basically I just have to move and I just have to get out <clears throat> and, um, everything else stays the same. I just have to leave. And why is it like that? Partly my fault, because when the divorce first started, then I was just kind of like, it was, the idea was presented to me by my ex. And the way that the frame of mind that I was, or state of mind that I was in, was that I was severely depressed. And how he presented it was, you know, he's the one with the job, he's the one with the, all of the resources. And so he takes the house, he takes over everything. And, um, and that way everything stays the same and nobody else's world gets turned upside down except me. And I just quietly leave. And yeah, for me, it was important that everyone else be okay. So, um, but now I am faced with the very, very scary, uh, thing where, you know, I have to get out into the world, scary, big world on my own. And that is just very scary now, um, that I'm faced with it. Um, anyways, and you know, you can say all this and all that and, and whatever, but uh, at least they're all okay. So, um, with all of this stress, you know how sometimes like when you have so much internal um, emotions and fears and all that comes up, sometimes you just need a distraction and sometimes you just need to throw yourself into something. So whereas other people might cope by throwing themselves into work, you know, or throwing themselves into a project, right? And I guess that's what the 16 hour challenge was for me. I am so swamped and overwhelmed um, emotionally and mentally and spiritually and everything. I've been working on my myself, um, um, trying to heal and my own spiritual and healing journey. But you know, everything is crashing down around me in my in my real world. And um, so, throwing myself into this challenge um, was an act of desperation to just get some kind of relief from all of the mental stuff and um, turmoil in my heart and my mind. So, so um, I still haven't posted the video footage from my first 16 hour challenge. And I've been debating if I should or not, because I mean, now, you know, it's kind of like, oh, who cares now? But you know what? I think I will, because I did do it. It was a 
big deal for me and and I have the footage so I'm going to get my act together and I'm going to uh, put that together and get it out there but uh, my first my first one was just me alone waking up at um, like I don't know what time I woke up like one in the morning and something and not being able to get back to sleep and then just deciding you know what I'm going to suit up and I'm going to get on my EX30 and I'm going to ride for the next 16 hours. <laughs> and I did that without much of a plan, without a route, without without anything really. I have my Roger charger and my EX30. And my EX30 um, is the only mod that it had on it was that um, Roger had done the power distribution board mod so that I am able to charge at a higher rate. So I'm able to charge at 18 amps rather than your typical uh, 9, 10 amps of the EX30. That's the only mod on it. Otherwise, it's, you know, just a plain stock uh, EX30. And um, I, without even, now here's the thing. I have never been an endurance person. I have always considered myself to be a fast like sprinter type, you know, sprint and then I'm done. You know, it's like, because one of my biggest flaws, one of my biggest weaknesses is that I get bored really easily and I have to like hop from one, I'm ADD, I have to hop from one thing, to, I can't focus for very long, right? So just the thought of riding for 16 hours was seemed impossible to me. But, um, okay, so I hopped on my EX30, I set out, and I did it. I completed it. And I did it. I did like 252 miles. And I was very, I was very happy. And I was very surprised that I was able to do it. Um, but, uh, oh God, I have to keep an eye on the time here. Okay. But um, I actually ended that ride feeling like I actually could have done better. I felt like I had not given it my all, that this wasn't my best and <clears throat> and all that. So then I kind of had a feeling that, you know, hey, I should do it again and uh, do better this time because I felt like I still had so much in the tank, which was insane to me because you think I'd be completely drained after that, right? So, but then, you know, I'm talking to people and then they're like, yeah, well, what would have happened if you had had a master pro, you know, or an actual wheel that was a contender and what would have happened if I had, um, if I build on, on learning from the mistakes I had made this first attempt and then, you know, apply that into a second attempt. So then the talk of a second attempt came into being and then, um, uh, Marty and Roger got involved and I had people offering me uh, their, um, uh, the use of their master pros and stuff like that. So then, and then, um, Roger had already completed his challenge, um, at this time and he had made his 9,600 watt hour master pro for, for his, um, for his challenge run. And I mean, that wheel is a beast. 9,600 watt hours, you guys, that is two master pros into one wheel, right? Oh God, I can't sit still. Um, so, <laughs> okay. I have to remember this. I'm not used to anyways, let's sit sideways. Oh God, my leg. Okay. So, um, I can't ride that thing. I don't know how heavy it is, but I don't know. Can you guys figure it out? A master pro and a full another set of master pro batteries on top of it. Cause those batteries are heavy, but, um, I've heard inklings of like, you know, uh, I heard a weight of like 210 pounds. Like I think someone said that Archie had made one or something and it was like 90, uh, it was like 210 pounds something like that. So anyways, um, that's the number, that's the only number I have in my head. Anyways, it is, but it's not just about, it's heavy. If you, if you look at his, oh, Roger has his 16 hour challenge video out. So definitely take a look at his channel. He has lots of great videos out, but, um, it's that it's long. 
because he put all of the batteries in a row lengthwise. So it was so long. And you know how like if you have if you have something this long, then then when you when you pivot, then it moves like this much, right? Well, you double that, and you, if you pivot from this point, this end point is moving like a lot. It's just a lot. It's long. So when you're trying to balance, and it's heavy, and the weight is not centered. <laughs> so, so anyways, um, Roger rode that wheel. He got 363 miles on that wheel in 16 hours, and um, for the win on on bum legs because he was still severely injured from his previous very serious lynx crash so yeah <laughs> roger is a beast and that wheel was a beast and they were a good match and they um they absolutely deserve the win that they got now he offered he offered to let me use his wheel <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, because, you know, other people are offering to me their, their master pros, right? Oh, yeah, 4,800 watt hour wheel. He's like, well, what about a 9,600 watt hour wheel? And I'm like, yeah, I can't do that. And then he had the idea, well, what if I took out um, some battery packs and made it a 7,200 watt hour wheel, which, so... The 9,600 watt hour wheel basically doubles uh, the capacity. Where am I at? Okay, I can talk a little bit longer. And then the 7,200 makes it like one and a half of a, um, of a Master Pro. So um, I wasn't sure if that was going to work. And for a long time, I was hemming and hawing. And then I was like, you know what? I'll just, I'll just ride a Master Pro. Like, I am not out there to win. I just want to see if I can do better. And if I can have access to a better wheel, then, you know, why not? You know, it'll give me a better chance. But I know I'm not going to win against a 9,600 watt hour wheel and Roger. I mean, that combination is like the lethal, what, what do they call it when they, when you have a lethal combination or something like that, you know, like the oh, epiphany, epiphany, epitome, the epitome of like, oh, right? It's like, I know I'm not going to win. So, you know, it's like, I'm just fine with a Master Pro because at least I know that I can ride a Master Pro. And the only reason why I know that is because Jeff at the last Sunday ride let me ride his Master Pro because he was going to he was going to let me ride it for the competition. And then I rode it around in the parking lot. I was like, hey, I can ride a Master Pro now. So um, so as a, at least I know I can, you know, ride the Master Pro. How much time I got? Three minutes. Okay. And um, <clears throat> I'm just saying that for myself because I have to stop this and I have to start it again um, because my phone's weird. Anyways, so, um, but then, you know, <sighs> Roger was like, no, I, I think you can do it and all that stuff. So with his encouragement, I was like, okay, let's, let's try it. So, you know, I, I'll, I guess I'll be willing to try. So um, we got that put together and I uh, helped helped a little bit with that and then we got it loaded into my car on Wednesday this is the last week of the challenge so it was Wednesday and then Thursday and you had to have your submissions in before midnight of the end of Friday or yeah midnight is the end of Friday okay so so Wednesday I picked it up Thursday night is when I would have to start it to do my 16 hours before the end of the time. So I was literally at the end of the time to do this. So, yep, I picked it up on Wednesday, you know, got my pads put on it, um, got my EUC world working and synced up with, or connected. What do you call it? When um, paired, paired with EUC world and all that stuff. You know, got everything going to where I'm like, okay, I think I still don't know if I can ride the thing. I tried and it seemed like I could, but nah, right. So anyways, um, basically it would boil down to Thursday, depending on when I started or, you know, Friday morning. And then that was when I would have to 
um, get on the wheel for reels, see if I can ride it for reels, learn how to ride it, and then ride it for the next 16 hours and do the best that I can. All right, um, let me switch to part two. All right, so where was I? Um, let's see. So it is now Thursday night, and um, I don't, oh God, I don't even remember all the details now. But um, I, I get up and I'm starting to get ready. And I think it was like one in the morning or, or midnight or something like that. I had only gotten two hours of sleep. So I hadn't gotten a lot of sleep, but that wasn't, that in itself wasn't too, too big of a deal because I haven't been sleeping well anyways. So um, anyways, I get going and it's like, I think I started at like one or two in the morning or something like that. And <clears throat> I hit the streets and I wanted to be out in the streets when traffic wasn't going to be so bad. And my plan was I was going to be on the streets until daylight and then I was going to head over to the bike paths. Um, I get on the streets and I'm going, it's dark. And um, I, <laughs> the first few miles were very sketchy and I had chosen not to bring this was with the recommendation by Roger not to bring the Insta360 camera, just focus on the wheel, which I totally, when he suggested that, I was like, yeah, you know, that's smart because, um, because I need to just focus on the wheel. So, um, what am I doing? So anyways, I get out there. There was one, uh, I, I'm getting pretty good. You know, I'm learning the wheel and everything. Um, the whole and that whole entire leg, my first leg, I did 97 miles. I got it down to 92 volts and um, I only put my foot down twice. I ride for about three hours and then I charge for about a little bit over an hour, like an hour and 10, hour and 20 minutes, something like that. And then I ride for three hours. And so I had a total of... Um, four legs, four riding trips, and three charges. And the first time I charged, I came back home. Then uh, the next two times I charged, I charged at Roger's shop. And at home, I had, um, with Roger's help, uh, made a dryer, um, my dryer outlet can handle 40 amps. So I went to Home Depot and I got an adapter for a plug to plug into the outlet. And then um, he, Roger told me how to, how to wrap the wires and stuff to another plug so that I can plug in the chargers to that. And it's a three prong outlet thing. And it would maintain the, the 240 volts and um, for up to 40 amps so that I could, with um, two, char two Roger chargers, I could pump out 38, uh, 38 amps to this wheel. Uh, let's see, the, there was one scary moment in that leg that was super scary, that would have been the end of everything, where I was riding down the street and the cars were starting to come and it was dark and I kept, I kept hugging the right side of the lane. Well, at this part of the lane, the road is like this wide, right? It's like plenty of road, but it was like, there were two lanes here. So two car lanes here. And then over here was a right hand only turn lane, but the road still looked this wide all the way down. So I went into the right hand only, um, right turn only, right turn only lane. And those cars are over there and I'm just, you know, cruising along here. And uh, I didn't realize until I was right on top of it that after it, it became right hand turn only, then all of a sudden after a few feet, the road just cut out. It stopped and it became construction. So there was a drop about this much where I dropped off of the pavement the pavement stopped and it became it became like the road that had you know still needs to be made 
And so I dropped off of that. And then there were all these like ridges of dirt and gravel and stuff. I don't know what it's called. It's like when a road is still under construction to be made into a road, right? Oh my gosh. I didn't realize until I was right on top of it because it was dark and everything that it had done that and I wasn't expecting it. So I think I was distracted. I was looking at other places. And then when I finally like realized I was too late, I couldn't swerve this huge wheel. So I was like, oh, mm, we are going to die. And went boom, 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 boom. And then we went and luckily we didn't die. <laughs> I met we managed to get back uh, onto the road and everything was fine, but that was the scary, scariest moment. Okay, the whole entire time, my goal was to ride around 40 miles an hour. My For the first leg, I actually rode um, the average, my average riding speed was 37 miles an hour. I only put my foot down twice. In all of the legs, I would, I never really had to put down my leg. I didn't have to take a break <clears throat> um, uh, due to my legs or anything. My knees were hurting at the beginning, but weirdly enough, my knees actually, they kind of got used to it. I learned how to ride the wheel. I got good at riding the wheel. And then I had to learn how to sit on the wheel. I've never been a seated rider before, not not anything that you would call a seated rider, okay? I'm, I wasn't that good. I could sit, but really comfortably in a straight line or slow definitely not at 40 miles an hour and you know winding through the bike paths and obstacles and stuff like that um i had to learn that i had to learn that on the fly but i didn't learn it until the very last leg so if i had done that from the beginning <clears throat> doing proper seated riding from the beginning I could have done better, but I didn't learn it until the very last leg. Um, and even then, you know, anyway, so there was that, um, maintaining my speed was fine. I actually got really good at maintaining my speed and holding the speed. And, you know, every time I checked, I was pretty much somewhere between 35 and 42 miles an hour. And I would, you know, adjust accordingly. Um, the discipline, I, I, that was, that was something that I impressed myself about was that I actually, I actually grew some discipline and patience somewhere along the line in my life. And so I, I was disciplined and I was patient. The third leg was the hardest for me. The third leg, I started to fall asleep. I was, I was bored. Um, when I fall asleep, it's not because I'm tired. It's because I'm bored. I'm mentally bored. And, um, yeah, I actually, I don't even know how much of the second leg I did asleep. Um, I just know that I kept waking up and then like almost like running off the trail and having ah, emergency, you know, turn and turn. I don't know how I survived the third leg, but on the bike trails, there is like no stops for anything. There's nothing to, so I had to go all the way to the end of that. And at the end of it, I knew there was a liquor store at the end. So I had to pull off, get to the liquor store, get in there. And I bought, um, a, a thing of root beer and then a pastry that was packed with sugar. And I guzzled that down just to get a sugar hit. So that wasted a lot of time. <clears throat> um, let's see. Other than that, um, everything went smoothly. I had that one scary moment at the first leg. It's like the first leg was all about learning the wheel. Um, you know, you're kind of, you're kind of hyped about the whole thing. You're feeling good. You're like, well, there's a lot of scary, you know, of learning the wheel. But then, you know, once I learned it and I was like, okay, okay, cool. You know, I feel like I got this. Everything's going to be good. Then the second leg was, okay, I'm confident this is going well. You know, um, I'm still not so great about hopping off the wheel and getting the charger in there and, um, and then, you know, watching the clock and making sure that I get out in time. As soon as, you know, the, the wheel's ready, then hop back on the wheel and go, I'm kind of like, la, 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 la. So that is something I can definitely improve on. Um, but the second leg, I don't remember anything really big about the second leg. 
Um, I try to, I try to do little things that are different to try and keep my brain engaged, but, um, you know, there isn't too much wiggle room for that kind of stuff, unfortunately. And that is my biggest weakness. Then the third leg, I was falling asleep and that was my biggest challenge. And I think my third leg was my weakest leg. And, um, then the fourth leg was all about, um, okay. It's funny because at the beginning you're thinking like 16 hours. Oh my gosh. That's so much, that's so much time. Right. And then by the time it's the third or fourth leg, you're like, oh my gosh, I only have a few hours left. How am I supposed to get all of these miles squeezed into just these few hours? It's like, I need more time, you know? And so it's, it's funny that, um, but, uh, yeah, the fourth leg was all about getting the, the time in. So the fourth leg, getting the time, the, getting the miles in, getting the miles in. Um, and then you're struggling with, okay, like I can go fast, but then I'll burn out the battery. You know, how much time do I have left? You know, it's like, try to get it where you use all of your battery as quickly as you can, but using up all of your time. And that, you know, that's not a straight arrow answer. Everything depends on everything else. Now, the big factor that I didn't realize, I probably should have stayed in the Huntington Beach side where there wasn't a lot of wind because in the Inland Empire coming, I was thinking, well, my last leg, I'm going to head home. Well, I live in the Inland Empire and the Inland Empire has we are known, we are notorious for very heavy winds, the type of winds that pick up sheds and throw them across, you know, several streets over to another person's backyard sort of thing. So this is a bigger, heavier wheel. It has a bigger surface area on it. And the winds were picking this up. I'm talking about now we're talking about at the very end of the challenge. Okay. I have, I have, I'm racing the clock to get more miles in and the wind is picking up and there were several times that it picked up this wheel and shoved me and I am only this big and the wheel outweighs me and the wind is stronger than I am. And those two things combined against me, I felt like I was going to lose. So several times it, 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 uh, they worked against me and I was scared, but I saved it and everything was fine. But I was like, oh, to the point where like, okay, I'm not going to focus on the competition anymore. I need to get home. I need to get out of this wind. This is scary. I need to get out of this wind. I just kept thinking I need to get out of this wind. So I'm now, I'm now off of the bike trail. I'm on surface streets. I'm headed home. I'm two and a half miles from home. And, um, the wind, a wind, a wind, the wind like catches my wheel and shoves me and shoves me. And I, you know, you can't really slow down because I'm only going like 30 miles an hour and <clears throat> I'm going like 30 miles an hour. And if I slow down, the wheel gets heavier and the, and the wind pushes me down more. Right. So I have to speed up, but it's not really speed up. It's more like just, you know, using the, the, the power of the wheel to stay upright and fight against the wind because the wind's pushing me and I'm, you know, pushing back. And, and the, so the wind's coming at me like this, um, kind of from my front at an angle from my front and right and pushing me. So I'm kind of leaning forward and shoving into it with, with my shoulder this way. And then, uh, I, you know, I was in the 30 mile an hour range in the 30 to 40 mile an hour range. I am not expecting this wheel to cut out on me. It did. It just cut out. And then the wind slammed me to my left side. I got slammed so quickly and suddenly I, you know how a lot of other accidents or my crashes, I can tell you, yeah, I saw it coming. So I prepared by doing this and this and this, and then this happened and I did and all that stuff. Not the case for this one. I did not anticipate it. it I, I felt like I didn't do anything that should have warranted a cutout. Um, I wasn't going fast, you know, and I was just fighting the wind. Granted, I 
wasn't knowing how much power I was asking of this wheel, of this heavy wheel to fight against the wind, right? Um, so that, I guess, was my biggest um, fault. I didn't know how much power that wind was costing, uh, fighting that wind was costing us. But, um, but anyways, um, I got hurt. I got very hurt. And then you'll see my other videos where I show you my hurts. I'd have to pull down my whole sleeve here to show you that. But this is just a little thing which isn't even worth looking at. But um, uh, there was a road rash. All my gears trashed. Um, the wheel was trashed. And that was the biggest shame was that I broke Roger's special wheel. I assured him that I would pay where we are in time. Okay. I would pay for everything. I like, I am like deeply shamed and I would pay for everything to make it right. I will buy him a new wheel if that's what's necessary. Like, you know, it's like whatever it takes, I will make this right. I'm so, 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 so sorry. Um, but, uh, Anyway, so, so I crash and then, um, uh, there's like my gear is everywhere. My phone is here. My Android phone is here and all this stuff. And I am just devastated and deflated. Um, not just about the competition, but mostly about just ruining Roger's wheel and all that stuff. Um, and I'm not kind of in a place in my life. For, it's like, Oh, right. So anyways, um, uh, strangers came up and they helped me out and they gave me a ride home. So big thanks to good Samaritans out there, um, saved me. And then, oh, something I forgot to mention. <laughs> there was something wrong with the, with the batteries because the BMS after my first leg, um, even pulling up and I'll wait. I already posted that video. You hear my, the BMS is beeping. The BMS beeped the entire ride. I did. And that was a little sketchy and a little scary, right? Because it's like, uh, only after the first leg, the BMS is beeping so loud. And what do we do? You know, it's like, um, do I just continue to ride it? So Roger said, yes. So it was like, I continue to ride that wheel with the BMS beeping the entire 360 um, three miles. Now I'll say that I did 363 miles outside of the competition's limit. I rode 163 miles for the 16 hours and 11 minutes, but for the competition, they chopped off the last 11 minutes because it's only 16 hours. And, um, so that makes it 361 miles is my official mileage. But, you know, I rode 363 miles for that, um, that entire, um, and that BMS was beeping the entire time. Well, after the crash, you know, three of the extra battery, there are four extra battery packs on that wheel. Three of those were strewn all over and they had broken wires and wires exposed and stuff like that. Uh, one was still on the wheel. So, and two packs were BMS beeping. So now it's like, Ooh, this is kind of a dangerous situation. So we get, um, I, Oh, the worst part of the crash was that, <clears throat> all right. So the wind is pushing at me from this way and I'm leaning up against it. And then the wheel cuts out and it shoves me over this way. I crash on my left side, my left shoulder, my whole part of my left helmet, left side of my helmet all of my gear on my left side is just like, bam. Right. So then I feel my shoulder, my, my shoulder armor tear off and I feel my skin on the ground. And so I flip onto my back. So now I'm on my back. The back of my helmet is scraping down and, uh, my backpack is getting torn up, shredded to pieces. And, but I'm on my back now because that's where I have protection. And but the wheel, this 7,200 watt hour wheel, when it, um, oh God, do I have enough time? When it decided to um, cut out, then you know what they, I was not tethered to this wheel. <clears throat> so when it decided to cut out, then it did that somersault thing. And when it did that somersault thing, I'm on my back like this 
and it's somersault and it hits me in my stomach. And that is a big, heavy wheel. So I had like internal organs writhing and unhappy and bruising across my ribs and both sides and up high. And uh, it's like, so that was, a, so anyways, um, I'm injured. And then I have to load up this wheel, this heavy ass wheel and all the parts to it and get it to Roger's shop because the BMS is beeping, I have exposed wires, we don't want it catching on fire. So get it to a shop, um, I help him to take it apart, neutralize the danger, and then um, the night is over. So, um, oh, so then after that, um, E-Wheels, Jason, um, comes on and, you know, he congratulates us and everything because for a little while it was, they were thinking that it might be a tie, but then it wasn't a tie after they analyzed the data, but it was close and all this stuff. But, um, Jason from e -Wills, thank you so much, actually came on and said, you know what, um, we will cover the cost for fixing Roger's wheel. <laughs> So big, big, big thanks to Jason for saving my butt on that one. I would have done it, you know, I have to, I would have figured out a way and all that stuff, but that really helped me out. And I am very, very grateful to, um, to Jason for, for doing that. Oh gosh. And, and once again, I am so sorry to Roger for breaking his wheel under any normal circumstances, I can tell you that, you know, I'm not going to crash other people's wheels. You know, I borrow Marty's wheels or the demo, not Marty's personal wheels, but Marty's, the demo wheels and stuff like that. And I'm like, I'm trustworthy, you know, and, and I know to be careful with other people's wheels. It was just really sorry. Those conditions just, um, and I didn't realize about the whole cutout thing at, 30 miles an hour sort of thing. But anyways, um, everything in that pers aspect worked out. And by the end of it, it puts Roger's special, specially modified wheels took up the first two winning spots. Um, first and second spots on the podium, you right, is Roger's modified wheels. And, um, and then Cher took up the third spot with, I believe Cher has a modified wheel as well, but I don't know Cher. So um, hopefully he'll be in the live stream tonight with Roger and then he can talk to us about his story and what he went through. But um, okay, so I think I've taken you through the journey of my 16 hour challenge one and two. I will try to get the, um, I will try to get the video out, the video footage out of my first challenge. The second challenge video is already out. I know it's, there's not a lot to it, but it's because I, you know, couldn't, I couldn't get, um, I couldn't carry the selfie stick. And it's a good thing I didn't because if I had, then that crash would have killed my Insta360. Absolutely. So it was a good thing that I didn't have it then. But, um, and, uh, you know, I'll talk more about um, details about the 16-hour challenge because there's so much I learned and everything. And it was a great experience. Big, big thanks to Jason at eWheels for putting this on, letting me have the opportunity to test myself and distract myself from real world, real world worries. And uh, big thanks to my new members. Please consider joining and becoming a member. I'm going to try to release member only videos. And whenever I release a video, I'll try to get it to the members first. And then before releasing it to the public, there's, you know, whatever, you know, stuff I can do. Um, this one I might not do that with because we have that live stream tonight. And I do want you guys to get the heads up um, my story before that live stream hits tonight at 6 p.m. PST. Check out Roger's channel. That's Roger EUC with Roger Charger. He has all the details for everything. I'm just the little um, <laughs> little minion like tagging along <laughs> in the background. But 
anyways, thank you all so much for joining. Thank you all for your love and support. Um, I hope this was entertaining for you and I will see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.